Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm gonna teach you how to take plants from seed through to system, any system, Dutch bucket, wick wedge, NFT, or rain gutter grow system. Any system you can think of, you can use this technique. So this technique is using my how to make rock wool grow cubes for 2.5 cents per cube method. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out here. It's a really nice method of getting really cheap rock wool cubes and eliminating a lot of the cost of propagation in the meantime. So essentially what we've got here is a large rock wool slab cut up into multiple cubes. Now I've actually changed from doing cubes about that size to cutting them in half again so we can halve that cost. So from 2.5 cents, we can go down to 1.25 cents. The only downside to this method is that you'll have less redundancy. So if you forget to water these seedlings, I mean, the rock wool holds half as much water. But as you'll see, we're not gonna baby the plants. Just like Troy Rosenberg said, when we went and visited his water gardens, he sticks them in as soon as he sees the, pretty much the first leaves start to come through. So that's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna take these plants to any form of maturity. We're just gonna take it to the point where they can handle being outside. And when I put these plants outside, it's gonna be the middle of summer. So if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so it's simply time to wet these cubes down. I'm just using water. And you know what? I'll probably just use water for the whole germination phase. But I'll let you know if I switch over to hydroponic nutrient, I don't think I will. Usually I get them to a more mature stage, but having seen what Troy's doing over at the water gardens, I think we can take these plants all the way to their first true leaves and even beyond that with just water. So water these blocks in like so. Leave a little bit of water underneath and now we can plant them. If you haven't seen the water gardens episode, I'll leave a link here and you can jump over and see how a commercial herb farm actually handles the way that they take plants from seed to system. Okay, so now you can choose what you wanna plant. Now there's two methods I'm gonna use. One is I'm gonna use a sharp implement to put a hole in the top of all of these rock wall cubes. And the second for the seeds that are just so vigorous, I'm wasting time by putting a hole in the top. I'm just going to sprinkle the seeds directly on top of the rock wall cube. They will germinate and send roots down into the rock wall cube. So a lot of these seeds you do not need to bury. So I'm gonna sprinkle these cause seeds that Rob from Rob Bob's Aquaponics gave me. Thank you, Rob. And we're going to see how you actually don't really need to bury these seeds. I'm gonna probably do a half a tray of cause. I'm gonna do a half a tray of a different style of lettuce. And then I'm going to do a mixed tray of fruiting plants because they'll take a bit longer and they'll be in a tray of their own. So all I'm doing is literally just sprinkling them, a couple on the top of each, and just make sure that, that most of the seed is in contact with the moist surface of the rock wall. And this makes it really easy because you can see exactly which rock wall cubes you've done. And as you can see, I've just put all those seeds directly on top of that rock wall. No extra effort making holes or anything. Two seeds for each cube, so there's not much waste. Now for the fruiting tray, I'm definitely planting some zucchinis. Now, in the last batch of zucchinis that I planted, I actually poked holes in the top and ripped up a rock wall cube and then filled the hole on top of the seed. Now, they all rotted, so do not fill the hole on top of the seed um, when you're using rock wool. Uh, we've got some, ooh, red cos. Oh, I might plant some of that. Can I renege on some of these seeds? Watercress. This is for you, Troy. <sighs> and now I can just go along with a pointy object. This is just a thermometer. And then we're going to make holes, really big ones, almost splitting the rock wool for the zucchini or any cucurbit that has a large seed. Uh, and then for the tomatoes and the capsicums, we're just going to make a little hole like that and you can pop your seed in there. And then for the others, we'll just do the same as we did with the lettuce and we're just gonna sprinkle them on top. 
So I'll go and make those holes. If you're using pre-bought Rockwell cubes, they'll already come with the holes. And you can sprinkle just over the top of those without using those holes if you like when you're, when you're doing it for lettuce, just to save you time. Now, there is another option that's quicker than this. If you go to a commercial seed manufacturer, seed manufacturer, if you go to a commercial seed distributor, they'll actually have what are called pelletized seeds. Now, pelletized seeds are coated in something that makes the seed a lot larger. And it makes it easier for growers, commercial growers, to actually uh, use machinery to pick up the seeds or just manually handle the seeds easier. So you, what you'll find is you can get pelletized cos seeds rather than the cos seed being you know that size. It'll be about half the size of a pea. It just reduces seed waste essentially. And those pelletized seeds will generally guarantee a certain rate of germination as well, like 90, 99 or 97 or something, so that the, the growers can guarantee a certain rate of success. You're only using one seed per grow meteor at that point. It becomes more efficient and more cost effective for those growers. But for people like you and me, this method is absolutely fine. Okay, so now that our cubes are all holed up and ready to go, I'm going to plant out our seeds. So this is just bok choy. And we're gonna do the same with the bok choy as we did with the others. So we're just going to sprinkle. Now this method's going to work if you have a humidity dome. Now, if you don't have a humidity dome, I would recommend putting them under the surface of that rock wall. Um, because that'll keep the humidity up for the germination and raise the rate of success. Look at those seeds. That's the watercress. They are tiny. I need like tweezers or something. This is what Troy was talking about when he was saying that he had a shaker and a whole size and everything to put out the perfect amount of seeds. Okay, so for the zucchinis, I'm gonna try and show you what I'm doing. The radical, which is the tip of the seed, is where the root emerges from. So you'll want the tip of the seed facing down into the rock wall. Now we're actually gonna place it against the edge of the rock wall cube. So if this is your rock wall cube, we're gonna put it in like that, and we're gonna push it in against the side wall like that. So it's touching as much as possible. We're gonna leave this space here open. That should germinate from the bottom and the root will penetrate into the rock wall cube and the leaves will push up and out and the seeds usually stay connected to the top of the leaf. So it will allow the leaf to push out the top, take the seed with it, at which point the cotyledon leaves will separate and will have the seed disconnect from the entire plant. And now we're finished planting our seeds we can put them under a light and start the time lapse. The light I use for germination and propagation is this. This is the Spider Farmer SF600. No sponsored placement here. It was originally given to me by Spider Farmer for a review video, and I fell into the trap of just using it because it actually works perfectly. Uh, for propagation. So this is on a 16-8 timer. So 16 hours on, eight hours off. I don't leave the seeds in the dark for any period of time. So I put them directly under grow lights. And then this is especially crucial if you are just sprinkling the seeds over the top of the rock wall. Propagation dome. Close the vents to start with. And then after a day or two, I'll open the vents, but really the moment that you see these seeds germinate, you want to be cracking these. So putting them on their side like so, allowing the seeds to breathe. If you don't do this, the humidity will cause fungal spores to germinate and they will destroy your seedlings. I've done this before by accident. I thought I'm going on holidays. I don't particularly want these seeds drying out. So I left the domes on and I came back and they were all dead because they'd been taken by fungi. So I'm going to pop the dome on completely to raise that humidity to start with. I'm gonna leave the cubes with just water in them and then I'm gonna check on them from time to time to make sure the cubes haven't dried out. And I don't see myself having to use nutrient 
before they go into the NFT or the full strength nutrient in whatever system they're in. All right, let's set up the time-lapse camera and see how they grow. Okay, at this stage we can now see that the seedlings have all pushed through and we've got an excellent germination rate. And I'll need to come through and thin a lot of these seedlings out. But now we're just going to crack that dome. So I'm just going to turn both domes to the side like that and allow the seedlings to breathe. And will you look at that? What a fantastic result. I'm really happy with how these seedlings came through. The only failure to germinate was from the tomato rockwool cube and some of the pak choy rockwool cubes, but those seed packets can be fairly hit and miss. So I'm not completely surprised by that. The cos has fully come through and I can actually tell which one's the red cause and which one's the green cause because of the coloration on the first true leaves coming through on some of those seedlings. It was a full germination rate on both Rob Bob's and the red cause that I put in. I've had reasonable success with the watercress. The Pak Choi has mostly germinated. I have got four Rockwell cubes there that haven't germinated. The tomato and capsicum that I put in have all germinated and pushed out of the holes that I made in the rock wall for them. And all of my zucchini have come through. Now, the zucchinis are the only ones that are showing nutritional deficiency. Uh, this is because I've probably overextended the amount of time that I've kept them in these rock wall cubes. They are extremely fast to germinate and vigorous to grow once germination starts. So these have pushed out a second true leaf and are pushing out a third true leaf on some of them. As that second true leaf pushes out, the first true leaf is getting some deficiency and that's how you know that it's run out of its seed nutrient. I would highly recommend not taking cucurbits to this stage on no nutrient. However, the rest have fared really well. Now these seedlings are 12 days old. Now, if you're interested in what stage the seedling is at, at what day, you can check on the time-lapse and it has date stamps so that if you're really interested in knowing when to crack that dome or when each type of seedling is at a certain stage of life, you can check against the dates and just subtract from the first timestamp on the time-lapse. However, this will change dependent on environmental conditions such as temperature, humidity, and the light cycle, etc. The temperature that these seedlings germinated in was 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. It's about 70 to 80% humidity. My propagation area is extremely stable, so the temperature doesn't vary much. It might go down to 24 at night and up to 28, 29 during the day, but it gives a really good environment for these seedlings to germinate in. If you can maintain your environment like that somewhere within your house that doesn't get too hot during the day or too cold during the night, those will be the ideal conditions to germinate under. So this is the point where we take our seedlings and put them in our system. Now, no babying, straight into full strength nutrient. Let's go. 
and you can see how much of a difference 12 days makes, not only in seedlings, but in full grown mature plants. These ones have gotten away from me and I'm going to have to um, string them down and cut off all of this lateral growth that's happening here. But that's for another video. Okay, so we've got our seedlings and now all it's a matter of doing is thinning as we drop them into the holes. Obviously some of them won't require thinning, but you can see we really didn't need that whole large rock wall cube and the roots are just starting to come out the bottom of this size rock wall cube. So we don't need rock wall cubes that large to support one single lettuce seedling. So I'm gonna go through and thin these out just by choosing the seedling that looks like it's doing the best. It's really hard when they're identical like that, uh, but I'm just gonna choose the one that has the most roots into the rock wall cube. We'll just take the other one, crop it off like that, and we can plant it just by dropping it straight into our NFT channel. And I'm gonna go and do the same with the rest. Now, because these channels are empty, I actually turned them off. So I'm gonna turn them back on just enough so that we've got a really thin film of nutrient at the bottom and we can, and we can continue dropping them in. And because the channel is surrounding the seedling and creates a nice humid environment for the seedling to grow in until it pops out the top of the channel. Okay, I'm now gonna do that for the rest of the seedlings and for the fruiting plants that I'm not ready to plant yet into my other systems, I'm actually gonna use the other side of my NFT, which I generally use for the nursery of my larger plants. Any that I can't fit into the NFT system, this is the point where I would start adding nutrient into the propagation domes. So I wouldn't actually put the cover back on these, but I would start feeding these guys probably a half strength nutrient because I don't want them to grow too fast while they're in here because what happens is they will just go crazy. And especially with the cucurbits, they'll start throwing out roots into all of the rock wall cubes around them. And when you separate those cucurbits away from the rock wall cubes next to them, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage to their roots. Mid strength nutrient from now on, if they're in here, but just full strength if you're going straight into your NFT or any other hydroponic system that you can think of. All right, well, thank you for joining me today on Huchos. I'm gonna leave you with a full NFT system time-lapse and I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy hydroponicking. I'm gonna put these guys in some systems and I'll see you next time on Huchos. <laughs>